You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So, Glenn, uh, Trump took to Truth Social to apparently see if he could make his own lawyer's heads explode. I'll put the post right up here on the screen. They said, when I was in the Oval Office or anywhere and papers were distributed to lots of people and me, they would often be in a striped paper folder with classified or confidential or another word on them. When the session was over, they would just collect the papers but not the folders, and I saved hundreds of them. Remember, these were just ordinary, inexpensive folders, but they were a cool keepsake. Perhaps the Gestapo took some of these empty folders when they raided Mar-a-Lago and counted them as a document, which they are not. So first off, does this help, hurt, or have no impact on Trump's case? Like, what does a prosecutor reading these posts do with this information? Yeah, Brian, this is evidentiary manna from heaven. You know, it, when and if uh, Donald Trump is indicted, he is making the prosecutor's job easier and easier. You know, people talk about hearsay all the time, right? Hearsay is something that's said out of court that um, the prosecutors then try to offer in court to prove the truth of the matter asserted. That's the technical definition of hearsay. But the good thing about the rules of evidence is anything that a defendant says out of court, the person on trial is not hearsay. It's called a statement of a party opponent, and it's admissible as evidence of any number of things, guilt. It's uh, admissible as consciousness of guilt and that's where I think these statements come in. First of all, let's just talk about how ludicrous it is that Donald Trump said, OK, these briefers would come to the Oval Office. And mind you, these are briefers who have some of the highest level security clearances our nation has to offer. Secret, top secret, top secret SCI, special compartmented information. And they brought briefing documents to the president in the appropriately marked folder, classified, top secret, top secret, SCI. They came, they briefed Donald Trump, but then they just left all the folders <laughs> flying around and they walked out with the classified documents in hand, you know, for everybody to see. Right. I, I don't know, maybe they made paper airplanes out of them and flew them out of the <laughs> White House window. We yeah. don't know. But just, you know, Donald Trump's assertion about how these classified materials were being handled by folks in the White House, it's absurd on its face. But here's where it becomes, I think, important incriminating information and evidence. He keeps telling different stories, giving different explanations. And, you know, some of these explanations might fly in the court of public opinion. I mean, people who are gullible enough to buy into what he's saying, maybe they're persuaded. You know who's not going to be persuaded? a jury, because what the prosecutors will do is they will line up all of these different conflicting statements Donald Trump has made, like, you know, that they just left all these folders lying around after they briefed me, or they planted uh, these folders and documents uh, when they were searching Mar-a-Lago, or I actually had the documents, but I declassified them all with my mind. You know, these are conflicting explanations. And when you line them all up and present them to a jury, they scream consciousness of guilt. He's flailing for some explanation that his base might believe. But you know what? A jury is not going to believe them. Well, you know, if if he actually believed any of this stuff, if, if any of it was actually true, I should say, don't you think his lawyers would actually present any of this in court in the rare instances that they've been in court? Of course, we would have seen this during the litigation. And there has been a good bit of litigation over these documents. There was the special master debacle. There's litigation that's still ongoing. Why? Because Donald Trump refuses to certify that he's turned over all the documents he took. Never once in any of the little litigation, we've never seen any reporting that Donald Trump's lawyers have offered to a court any of these ridiculous explanations. What does that tell you? None of them are true. Well, let me let me ask you this. What would happen to one of these lawyers representing Donald Trump if they brought up this egregiously false uh, you know, information, any of these egregiously false narratives? If a lawyer intentionally lies to a judge, that is a sanctionable offense up to and including being disbarred. So you know, that that's kind of an easy explanation for why all of this nonsense Donald Trump posts, none of it sees the inside of the courtroom and none of it 
comes out of the mouths of his lawyers. So I, I know that we've spoken about this before, but I'm trying to trying to take a take a note here from from the other side and, and kind of um, take my own advice when it comes to repetition. So uh, can can you go over again what the difference is between what Trump did and what Biden did uh, as far as these classified documents are concerned? Yeah, it's actually it's pretty easy, right? Superficially, people might look at these two situations and say Biden had documents he shouldn't have had. Trump had documents he shouldn't have had. I get the I guess these situations are comparable, but but they're not. You know, Biden, his team found some documents that were classified that he should not have had. What did his team do? Contacted the National Archives, contacted the Department of Justice, promptly searched other locations where such documents might be and turned them all over. Now, they are cooperating with the investigation that's being conducted by this newly appointed special counsel. So what did Donald Trump do? Donald Trump, according to his posts, took all of these documents that were found at Mar-a-Lago. When the National Archives came calling, remember the National Archives had to say, uh, Mr. Former President, these are ours. They don't belong to you. We want them back. Joe Biden, called the National Archives. Apparently, the National Archives didn't even know they were missing these documents, and Joe Biden volunteered to return them. Very different circumstances. When the National Archives approached Donald Trump demanding their property back, he said, no, not giving it to you. And then over time, some documents trickled out. Um, but Donald Trump retained, unlawfully retained, the lion's share of the documents. So the next step was the Department of Justice had to send FBI and high government officials down to beg and plead and cajole with Trump, please give us the documents back. And he wouldn't. They had to resort to a grand jury subpoena issued in a criminal investigation, which is a court order saying return all the documents. And Donald Trump didn't. So the only step that the, the Department of Justice had left at that point was to apply for a search warrant. And when they presented all this evidence and information to a judge, the judge concluded that there was probable cause to believe Donald Trump and company had committed three crimes and there would be evidence of those crimes located at Mar-a-Lago. And lo and behold, not only was there evidence of crimes, additional classified documents that Donald Trump was unlawfully concealing, some of them, Brian, were in his desk drawer. Yes, there were empty folders in his office, but some of the classified documents were in his desk drawer. I mean, talk about, you know, the difference between night and day. Well, that's the difference between the Biden classified documents incident and the Trump classified documents incident. Now, I know the issue at the heart of what Donald Trump did is, is that he was unlawfully retaining these documents and obstructing justice. Those were two of the charges that he was uh, confronted with. But what about the issue kind of at the heart of this, which is just having taken those documents in the first place? Because if Joe Biden also had documents, I'm just wondering about the illegality or the extent of the illegality on its face just for, for that charge in particular. And also, how often does this happen with other people? Yeah, a couple of great questions there. So how often does it happen? You know, I have a feeling, I, I have never been that high up in the federal government, but I have a feeling when administrations change hands from Republican to Democrat or vice versa, high government officials have their staff pack up a whole lot of stuff that they've likely accumulated over their four or eight years in power. And that stuff gets shipped, it gets forwarded to other offices. So I don't think it's that unusual for things that should go to the National Archives for retention to actually end up someplace else they don't belong. The question is, is that inadvertent? Is it mistaken? Is it accidental? Or is it intentional? And is it criminal? Is it done for a nefarious purpose? In other, in other words, some high government official leaves government service, takes highly classified documents because they want to leverage them somehow for their own personal advantage. I think that is pretty rare, but I think documents end up in places they shouldn't be pretty regularly. And when they're discovered, they're turned over to the National Archives. And that's the end of story, because let's talk about the possible criminality. In order to convict somebody of, let me just talk generally about classified documents crimes, you have to have two things. You have to have a criminal act, 
and you have to have criminal intent. So you would have to have Joe Biden knowing that these documents were being packed up and would be shipped to his office or his home. That would be part and parcel of the criminal act. And he would have to intend to basically do something bad with them, something nefarious. That would be the criminal intent. Based on what we know, based on what's publicly reported thus far, understanding we have to wait for the special counsel to do a complete investigation, it doesn't seem like there is either a criminal act or criminal intent. And yet Donald Trump, by his own account, said, I took these documents, his words, and I took them openly and transparently and they're mine, and I declassified them with my mind, and FBI agents planted them. Now, wait a minute. Now I'm sounding inconsistent, aren't I? Yeah. So again, you very likely have both a criminal act and criminal intent for Donald Trump, where both of those things necessary for a criminal conviction seem to be missing with respect to Joe Biden. So so this is this is so this is unique then because you you could for example and I know this is apples oranges but you can hit somebody with your car and have no intent to have done so but it's still it's still manslaughter right um so this this I guess is is not comparable to something like that this is you absolutely do need criminal intent to to move forward with any type of uh conviction in a stolen classified documents situation well so you can hit somebody with your car and it's an accident Accidents happen all the time, and there are not criminal charges that can be placed if something is accidental. There is a defense in the law called accident, mistake. Um, so, but then I don't want to get into a criminal law 101 class, but you know, there are different states of mind. There is negligence, there's gross negligence, there's recklessness, there's something called a conscious disregard for the extreme danger that your conduct poses. And then there is criminal intent. And there's this sort of cascading um, uh, series of different levels of intent. And each one carries with it the possibility of criminal liability or maybe no criminal liability. So yeah, you can mistakenly, even kind of negligently or recklessly have some documents sent somewhere they shouldn't be. And if you return them when you find them, um, there is probably not a prosecutor in the world who would bring criminal charges under those circumstances. Got it. Okay, let's finish off with this. There are those Trump apologists out there who say that Biden couldn't declassify the documents that he had because he was vice president, and yet Trump could declassify the documents that he had because he was president and the president has the ability to declassify documents. I'm sure you've been faced with that uh, with that talking point before. What's your response to that? So first of all, declassification is, is not uh, magic. Um, it's not somebody you know thinks it and things are magically declassified. There's a process to be followed. You know, once a declassification decision is made by a president, do you know that every single copy of that document, both hard copy and electronically stored copy, has to be marked declassified or else it's not properly declassified? And, you know, not that we've heard a lot of reporting about this, but I don't think many people are taking seriously. Donald Trump's claims that he, you know, thought them declassified, so they were. Right. I do look forward to prosecutors presenting that kind of information and evidence at trial, because I think 12 of the 12 jurors sitting in the box deciding Donald Trump's fate will basically laugh him out of court. Got it. Um, okay, so we'll leave it there. Obviously, more to, to follow on this case as we continue to wait for any type of movement from the special counsel. Um, but in the meantime, if you want to keep up on legal news, you can follow both my, my channel and Glenn's channel. Links are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.